Welcome back, everybody, to your Feel Good Breakfast Show right here on SABC3. Happy Thursday to all of you. But you guys know recently I was living my best life in Johannesburg. Now, whilst in Joburg, I visited the Johannesburg Wildlife Veterinary Hospital, a non-profit that is dedicated to rehabilitating our injured indigenous wildlife. Now, they've been doing some amazing work, and I was lucky enough to witness it. Take a look at this. The Johannesburg Wildlife Veterinary Hospital is truly the first of its kind, exclusively treating and rehabilitating indigenous South African wildlife animals and doing this all free of charge. Today we meet the heroes behind all of this and find out exactly what they do. Nikki, what an amazing establishment you have here. Take us through the process when the animals first come to you. Well, when any of the wildlife cases are brought through to us, the very first thing we do is um, examine them to check what treatment they need. Um, and, and then we uh, decide on a treatment plan and a rehabilitation plan right then and there. So as soon as the, thing, the animal comes in, we start uh, thinking about what we're going to do with it and where we're going to release it after the treatment has taken place. And then what happens after once they've done with treatment and then they are now in the rehabilitation centre? Well, if they're young animals that we've had to hand rear that have, that have been orphaned in the wild, um, they then have to go through a much slower rehabilitation process. They go into a soft release process. So they'll go into an enclosure in a reserve in suitable habitat. And then they go through a soft release process, which means they, um, they're support fed and they release slowly and softly and they know where to come back to for food. And that seems to be a very successful way of rehabilitating orphaned wildlife. When we have adult animals or birds come in, uh, we generally fix them up and try and get them back to their territories because all adult um, animals and birds and reptiles have their own home territory or their home range. And in that is all their familiar uh, places. They know where to get food, they know where to hunt, they know where to get water, and they have all their potential mates around that territory, so everything's very familiar. So it's important to get those animals back to where they've come from so they can just carry on with their lives. It's also my knowledge that all of this amazing work that you do is free of charge. How is this then able to work and able to maintain the place? Well, we're an NGO, and so we're, we often run um, uh, different projects for people to fund uh, for specific things, um, but we're, we're basically an NGO, so we survive purely on the generosity of the public and of our community. Now, I know you have an exciting day for us today. It's time to meet the patients. Yes. Ready to show me? Let's go. Yes. <laughs> Doctor, I'm sure you get so many animals coming through your door. What are some of the reasons? Most commonly, it's because of human-animal conflict. Things like barn owls nesting in your roof and making a noise, or bats nesting in your roof and it being smelly and there's um, guano everywhere. Uh, a lot of times people have genets that eat their chickens because they're not in a coop and they're outside and it's quite easy for the genet to get to it. Um, animals that have been run over, very commonly owls that sit on the road when people don't always like hardy dogs we'll be taking hardy dogs as well they often get uh, hit by cars and then oftentimes we get animals that we don't actually need to help like fledgling birds it's normal for them to fledge at a certain age and they spend some time on the ground and then eventually they learn to fly and they fly off parents will continue feeding them so people bring them in thinking that they've fallen out or things like a scrub here or even steenbok they stash their children under a bush and go and eat and come back later and people think those animals have been abandoned but not necessarily. You and Nikki are so passionate about all of this. Take us through when that joy first started for you. I was a normal vet. I worked with dogs and cats. I loved them. Um, and, but in 2012, I, I met Nikki at the rehab center that she was at. And all the rehab centers in South Africa, they don't have a vet. So they have to transport the wildlife to a vet, which is stressful for the animal, number one, because they're wild. And also the vet that they're taking them to have other clients that they have to see before they can get to the, the wildlife. And a lot of them have passion for it, but it's the time that's the problem. Um, so we've always wanted to combine the two. So in 2016, I left my normal paying job and jumped off the cliff and <laughs> we opened this. Um, and it's actually been very successful. Yeah. 
it's honestly so amazing to see the work that you do here at the facility. How can South Africa support this? For us, number one is funding because we have staff actually. We just don't, don't just work with volunteers, um, vets and, and we have a nurse and a lot of rehab um, staff. People that want to can come and volunteer. We have a wish list on our website if you want to donate and you can't give money. Um, there are lots of ways. What amazing work that's being done right here by the hospital, but we cannot wait to see all the animals out in the wild where they belong.